those, oh, not yet started, almost, yeah, started now. And welcome to those who joined in in the last few minutes. Um, so we will pray and we will get started. Uh, just want to request someone to lead us in a word of prayer, please. Anyone, you can unmute yourselves and pray. Ma'am, can I pray? Yeah, yes, please. Okay. Heavenly Father, we come before your throne of grace in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, as your word says, you give us more grace and mercy every morning and give us new opportunities. So, Lord, Father, bless our pastor with the spirit of revelation, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and remove every form of distraction so that this class will go smoothly without any kind of distraction, technical and bless each of one us with a listening ear and understanding heart so that we can grasp and understand whatever we learn in this class, Lord. And thank you for hearing this prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Abhishek. Uh, thank you for leading us in that word of prayer. So uh, what we'll do is we will... Uh, get back to what we were discussing in the last last uh, uh, session. So basically, we talked about um, the house of God, uh, and in the context, just just the context of uh, us being the family of God. And then we touched on, you know, a couple of um, points here. We said that we are a family, uh, but we are a spiritual family and there are boundaries between the spiritual and the natural families. And then we said the way every family has a culture, it has values, uh, it has vision, it has mission. So similarly, even the local church must uh, have these things. Uh, and we, uh, said that in a family, people are at various level, various levels of experience and maturity. So uh, that applies to the church as well. Uh, the people who are more mature, uh, they are expected to be more responsible and greater accountability is expected from them. And those who are just growing in uh, God, you know, we we kind of nurture them we nurture them uh, and we help them grow and there's you know more of um, forgiveness and uh, understanding uh, given to those who are just growing up uh, in a regular family as well as in the church family so these are some things that we talked about then we said that um, in the family of god uh, there are fathers and mothers those who are mature in god and uh, we we talked about how you know they impart into the lives of uh, uh, those who are growing in god and then you know we also said that it must be a a, a relationship where there is um, you know there, there is that mutual mutual understanding and care so the mentors or the fathers and mothers as as we want to call them you know, they are uh, they are pouring into the lives of the people who are growing and those who are receiving you know they are very um, uh, respectfully receive from those who have gone ahead of them so uh, we touched upon the characteristics of uh, fathers and mothers and then the characteristics of sons and daughters in the house um, uh, and I think we have covered that right on our fathers and mothers and uh, yeah so what we will do is oh yeah we, we talked about how we can establish a, a good relationship uh, with, with someone whom we want to mentor and you know that's where we were at we said that it's good to have a personal relationship with people and then from that place you know when we communicate with them um, uh, and not just you know superficial uh, communication but anything deep that has to address matters of uh, character they will be in a position to receive because we have built trust in that relationship uh, and then we said that uh, in a mentoring relationship, one must exercise positive influence uh, and see to the spiritual growth of the uh, person whom we are mentoring. Uh, and always deal with people's character, 
more than we deal with gifting now there will definitely be inputs that uh, are provided for a person to grow in the anointing and hone the skills that god has given them but you know uh, the underlying core thing uh, would be the character so we said that the character is the wine skin uh, if the character of of the individual uh, is is not okay then even the anointing cannot last for a very long time okay uh, and then we we talked about how we must uh, uh, not be jealous or envious of uh, you know the the fathers and mothers should not be envious of the people who uh, grow under them in fact they must be proud if anyone uh, has greater accomplishments compared to the uh, mature folk okay then uh, yeah train people based on their god appointed destiny so we we don't um just get them to do things which we think are essential for the for the functioning of the local church but we always have their destiny in mind okay and and that's how we we uh, uh, position them that's how we we groom them nurture them and then you know as the lord leads if uh, god would want that person to minister outside of the four walls of that local church then you know we bless them and send them out and also help them to make that transition so uh, this was about the mentoring relationship and how to build a positive mentoring relationship okay uh, yeah okay so the next topic here is about developing community but i think um, the subject of fathers mothers uh, even in the christian circle right now it's it's um, uh, i mean it already exists uh, in certain places i think um, i don't know i don't know what to call it but uh, it may not be used in the in the right way so i thought we could just talk about fathers and mothers and mentoring relationships a little bit before i uh, touch on the christian community uh, and also in the last class samuel uh, you had uh, uh, talked about uh, you know how a mentor should should go after the mentee uh, and be Or, or let's say labor of love right long suffering so just to keep going after uh, a mentee and to never give up on the mentee so the fact is that uh, yeah that's that's true that's true and a mentor should have a, a heart of that kind the father or the mother um uh, but you know reciprocity is is equally important so while the the father or the mother is doing their part to uh, to develop you know a, a a young person or somebody who's who's a fairly new in the lord the responses of of that individual really matter in the long run uh, and if the the uh, mentee responds well enough you will see a faster growth okay so uh, it has to be it has to be from both sides Uh, the cooperation has to be from both sides so i just thought i would uh, mention that and uh, i mean uh, samuel do you, do you have uh, anything to ask on those lines or just uh, i think um, no my thoughts on mentorship uh, which is a I mean, few thoughts that even i've been thinking about it so mm. so uh, at, at one level there are the church pastors uh, mm. you know, who who are the shepherds uh, per se who look after the flock and you know bear burden for the flock and make sure that you know everyone who's attending um is being spiritually nurtured but i think you know mm. a mentor is at a deeper level where once you decide that you want to mentor someone i mean if you jump in to mentorship for the opportunity to try out and you don't know the mentee well there are good chances that uh, you know expectations are not set there are chances like you know the mentor mentee relationship doesn't work but um you know if 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 there is no intentionality in terms of uh you know okay i i i've known this person for a while and um, and there is an opportunity for mentorship let me let me uh let me kind of think what i'm getting into and and you really think about that you you evaluate this person that you that you want to take up mentor i'm i'm i think i'm just uh 
in my mind, I think I'm thinking of uh, mentorship at a whole new level where it's, uh, it's more than uh, just, um, you know, I mean, so because uh, a mentor is not a mentor for the whole church, un uh, unlike a pastor is, you know, you're, you're, you're talking with one individual. I think the default position should be that, that yes, uh, you know, I, I'm here to develop the character, the spiritual growth, but, but this person will have character flaws. There are chances that the person might slip, you know, there are chances that the person might uh, not like uh, what I'm, the way I'm doing it. So, so I think the default question for me would be uh, to, to, to know all of that and, and enter into, I, I, I mean, can be customized, I mean, yeah. To uh, the default position, once I decide to take up uh, mentorship for someone, I'm going into like this is this is this could be this could as well be a lifelong relationship, and and even if the entire world gives up on this person, uh, I I won't. I'll be the last person because I, I think I'm I'm looking at if I'm looking at Christ as my model for mentor. Uh, and I'm looking at myself as a model for mentee. You know, and, and if I'm saying that you know, Jesus Christ mentor me, uh, you know, I'll, I'll not always be, you know, aligned. But but I would expect Christ to give up on me. I mean, it's ideal. I'm the most ideal. I know it's it's not always attainable. But the default is where I'm entering, saying like I'll not give up on this person. Uh, like I said, uh, you know, it could be customized. I mean, they, they could think like, you know, there there are chances that the mentor himself could could backslide, could fall into something, you know, and obviously loses the right to mentor someone and all of that. Or, or it could it could it, it could even be a mutual consent, like life, you know, life gets in the way. Mentor marriage has kids, other responsibilities, and things like that. So, you know, they, it, at, a, at a later journey uh, with mutual understanding, the mentor mentee relationship could end or could transform into something like friendship. Or, but, but, you know, this whole, uh, like if you say a father son, when does a father give up on the son? Never. I mean, ideally, a father doesn't uh, give up on the son. It's eternally hopeful. Eternally, so so I think that those, those were my thoughts. Thank you. Yeah, sure, 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 uh, Samuel. Thank you, thank you for sharing. Um, so uh, yeah, I mean, I I do understand where you're coming from, and uh, the thought that a mentor should never give up on a mentee, you know, it it is. Uh, uh, I mean, that's what it's supposed to be like, right? Because uh, Paul he wrote to. Um, I think it's the Corinthians where he says that you have many teachers, but you do not do not have fathers. So you know, a heart of a father is is something that uh, you know it, it's it's for the complete well being of uh, the children, and uh, the love of the father goes to a great extent. So yeah, in that regard, yes, the mentor or the father must never give up on the mentee uh, and, and yeah it, and and again you know as, as uh, uh, i pointed out earlier uh, if at any point the the one who's being mentored does not want to receive then it becomes hard but yes the father should go uh, a long distance uh, and journey and you know do their level best to uh, to help see this person grow. Uh, and when we talk about growth, uh, you know, I just wanted to share with us uh, on scripture. Now it is uh, from Galatians, Galatians 4 and verse 19. Let me read it uh, for us. It says, my dear children, for whom I am again in the pains of childbirth until Christ is formed in you. So, you know, that scripture is like the basis uh, of what, spiritual fathers and mothers should be doing so that is like the goal or the outcome of spiritual mentorship where christ is formed uh, and paul says you know i've labored i've labored in pains so that christ be formed in you so uh, whatever it takes you know teaching them the word uh, mentoring them with regard to their character, teaching them about the anointing, the work of the Holy Spirit. These are things that, that are the focus as we mentor people. Because what is our goal? Christ be formed in you. I labor. 
I labor so that Christ be formed in me. So Galatians 4.19 uh, is a scripture that we can remember. Uh, and I also just wanted to share this um, PDF. PDF you can download you know, from our website. So we had done uh, a sermon on spiritual fathers and mothers. Uh, it covers the insights that we've shared in this section about what mentorship is supposed to be and nurturing is supposed to be and all of that. Uh, but another good thing is that uh, this sermon addresses some of the, um, you know, some of the things that mentors should not do. Okay, so I will read that out for us. I thought that will be helpful um, uh, for us to note in this class as well. So uh, basically, uh, we talk about how one must not violate divine order. If, so by divine order, basically it means that you know there's a family structure and there's a family boundary that God has assigned. So as a pastor or a leader, like you can't you can't trespass the other boundaries that individuals have. Like you know, uh, okay, we we understood enough about this in prayer and intercession and believers' authority. So not to violate divine order. Now suppose a, a mentee is from another, uh, is from a local church and you know, we are mentoring them in, in the area of leadership or something like that. Now we can't, we can't um, trespass the, the boundary, right? There is a pastor over that individual and you know, that pastor uh, 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 so, sort of uh, work, mentors this person in a different way so you know you, you can't uh, override that so uh, maintain those boundaries don't violate divine order uh, no control or manipulation you know uh, control or manipulation because in the name of in the name of um, spiritual mentorship okay spiritual control and manipulation is a possibility uh, and you know that is something that we must stay away from uh, and uh, you know paul in fact he warned the galatians and he said that you must not come under bondage again so if christ jesus has set us free um, yes there are fathers and mothers in the church but that relationship should not become a relationship where you know you cannot make any decision of your own or you don't have a you don't have a thinking uh, mind of your own and everything has to be told to you by a, a, a preacher or you know everything from the bible has to be revealed to you through a, a particular pastor only if they teach from the word can we understand god's word you no know, because things like this are happening around the world unfortunately so uh, we must not let uh, a mentoring relationship or a father mother uh, spiritual father mother relationship become manipulation and control okay and uh, not to abuse spiritual authority so abuse of spiritual authority means interference in people's decision making now uh, uh, somebody who is uh, uh, growing in the lord whom we are mentoring they might want to make a certain decision regarding their career or how they want to plan their finances or whom they want to marry it's completely their choice you know as mentors as fathers and mothers we uh, are responsible to share the truth of god's word so we place the truth of god's word before anyone but the choice to decide is that individuals so you know that is something we must respect and we must not abuse our spiritual authority if we if we try to force people to make decisions um, uh, based on what we think is correct what they need what we think they need to be doing you know that is abuse of spiritual authority so that is not uh, you know um, mentoring or spiritual fathering or mothering okay mm. Yeah. So uh, the the other uh, some of the other points here is um, uh, not to uh, be envious of of those who have gone ahead of us. So you know it could happen that you know when uh, someone does better than the mentor, then the mentor looks for ways to pull them down or bring them down. So uh, to not not to do that uh, and to be open and secure such that um, people can receive from others as well. Uh, for example, uh, it, there is a pastor uh, in a church and the pastor is very anointed in terms of teaching. Now, uh, since the pastor has the teaching anointing and he really uh, imparts the word into people's lives. Now, if the pastor says that, okay, you must not listen to any other preacher or you must only read uh, uh, you know, my commentary of the Bible or, or things like that. What happens is 
we are trying to control people we're not letting them have uh, you know that that full perspective of what god is doing in the global body of christ so uh, a mentor should not stop a mentee from receiving from several true ministers of god because in the body of christ there are many you know whom god has raised up and the work of god is being done through the lives of so many people so uh, a father and a mother will not try to control okay and say that no you must listen only to me you must follow only what i say uh, and things like that so uh, and a little bit from history you know the shepherding movement of the 1970s and 80s uh, there is an element of abuse you know that started uh, in the christian circle um, and and that is something we must be wary about uh, so uh, while it's good to to have you know spirit people use term like spiritual covering and all that all that's good but at the end of the day our submission is to god okay the submission of every believer is directly to god and the thank god for people who he puts into our lives but nobody becomes a mediator there's only one mediator the lord jesus christ so some additional thoughts here uh, and uh, to to be cautious about you know um, Uh, some of the things that are being taught in the christian circle these days things like you know, if you don't have a spiritual father or a mother you have an orphan spirit so these are all misconceptions and there is no biblical basis for things like this um or you must be connected to a spiritual father or a mother otherwise you will not develop in god i mean um, there's no scriptural basis for statements like this if what if you don't have a spiritual father or mother you know the word of god uh, i i think 1 john 2 7 it says the anointing in you will teach you all things you know if it comes to that if you don't have a mentor the holy spirit is our mentor right so i can still learn still grow still mature through the word of god i don't need a human being to always be there for me now it is the way god works that he has given teachers in the body of christ and he does connect us you know to other individuals human beings in our lives and we praise god for that we receive from it but if at all we don't end up having a mentor that is not going to stunt our spiritual growth okay so uh, yeah there are lots of other statements like your spiritual lineage is important like who's the father your spiritual father of the father you know teachings like this uh, so i think i i'll just stop here you can have a look at the pdf we address all those issues and i think it will be very helpful um, for us so christopher we are right now on uh, page number 64 page number 64 yes yeah so uh, i hope those those thoughts help everyone any any other clarifications okay shri kumar is asking uh, can we pray to god to give us a spiritual father yes shri kumar that's a that's a good prayer we can pray that yeah we can pray that it's biblical it's biblical to have spiritual fathers and mothers so there's nothing wrong with that okay so i think there's yeah. enough light yes yeah, yes this, this uh, sir no this this really helps uh pastor i think um mm. I, i i wasn't aware of this pdf but i'm looking at it and it's very specific oh, okay. i think the specific uh, details really help uh, so i mean yes. my thought was just around uh, so there i think there's two sides of the like the one spec one end of the spectrum is where people have uh, taken the mentorship to a whole new level and have mm. misused it you know with mm. with uh, with uh, you know manipulation and all of the other things that you're saying but uh, mm. what i also see is the other side of the spectrum where it's taken very lightly you know like um, yeah. you know yeah meant i like i'm i'm becoming a mentor and then in one week i'm changing men- like you know and and it, it the, the whole thing is just namesake and and that is not uh, effective either so yeah, yeah. yeah sure sure prasan yeah that that makes sense and uh, a good way in which we can um, look for a mentee or look for a mentor is to be led by the spirit of god okay so i am reminded of elija and elisha you know how god made that connection so god has a way of bringing people uh, you know making people cross our path uh, and when we we see that divine connection there go by that don't just go by 
thinking, oh yeah, I can do a good job of mentoring this person. But in addition to that, in spiritual mentoring, we need that divine connection over there for us to uh, decide, you know, who we want to mentor or who wants to, uh, who we want to be mentored by. Yes. Okay. Uh, Shri Kumar, uh, yes, I saw your hand raised. So, Pastor, you you cleared it uh, when you said that uh, no Holy Spirit will. Actually, my question was this: that uh, whether we can choose a mentor or the God has to give us a mentor. So yeah. in that line now you clear it. So that's why I just um, uh, you know lower okay. my hand. So thank you. Thanks. God. Okay. Sure. 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 Great. Great. So that's the best way of uh, finding a mentor. Depend on God. Depend on the Holy Spirit. So if we are comfortable with this uh, subject, we can move on to the next section over here, uh, which is about community, developing community. Uh, okay, so developing community, I think uh, Christopher in the last class had uh, a question about life group. Um, so, you know, we will address that. As of now, in the local churches, one of our main gatherings happens to be the Sunday service, which is fine. But in addition to that, if we have other ways where people can connect, they can get to know one another, smaller group connections, it really helps for um, many things to happen in the lives of people. Okay? So that nurturing can take place. We can find fathers and mothers, mentors. We can learn uh, you know, so many things. We can um, equip ourselves in the, in the work of God's ministry. Uh, all, and all this can be done well if there are smaller groups where life-to-life -life connection happens. So, while we talk about Christian community, we will try to define what Christian community is supposed to be. And our be best example is that of the early church. Okay, so there is a passage given here in uh, our notes. I'm on page 65, the end of that uh, page. Acts 2 verses 44 through 47. Uh, could somebody please read this passage? Yeah, anyone, please. Acts 2, 44 to 47. Yes. Now yes, all who believed were together and had all things in common and sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need. So, continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Charles, for reading. Uh, so some characteristics that we can see in the early church is the sharing of resources. They uh, had, uh, you know, their, their spiritual life, they were serious about it and they engaged in things that would strengthen their spiritual life. So there is prayer that is being talked about. They met, you know, uh, to learn from the teachings of the apostles. So the word of God had uh, importance in their community, worship. Okay, so, they, so they got together to worship God. So that was the reason, that was the core connection for the community. And then, uh, yes, they also had fellowship. They uh, ate food in each other's homes. And why is it that way? We discussed it, you know, when we talked about the different kinds of church structures. Uh, early church had homes where people could gather. But today, the format is slightly different. You know, we can't really gather uh, in people's homes all the time. So, uh, you know, we have our main services. And then you have other forms of gatherings. And then, yes. Uh, some churches do have life groups. So they gathered in people's homes. Um, uh, then they worshipped. They worshipped at home. They worshipped in the temple. Uh, they had favor with all people. So that just shows they had good, healthy relationships among themselves and with the uh, people outside. Uh, and, you know, it was, it was a place where God was working uh, and the presence of God was so real, the work of God was so real that many people were being added to the community. So it was a growing community. Uh, and uh, that's how we observe the early church. Now, keeping that in mind, 
what we are saying is a good godly community of believers will have the following characteristics one is to have christ at the center okay so why what is the reason we we fellowship christ is the reason okay so that must uh, be the main thing because otherwise we just end up doing a social club like anyone else out there in the world and it 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 is no different from the communities that we can be a part of outside of church so uh, when we talk about nurturing or developing godly community we must make sure that christ is at the center of our uh, fellowship and our gatherings that we relate to one another so that we can spiritually build one another up so again the way paul said you know I, what is the reason for my laboring that christ may be formed in you christ like character may be formed in you and what is the reason for our spiritual fellowship with one another same thing same thing that we may grow uh, in the things of god uh, and therefore you know a good spiritual community will have um engagements in worship in prayer uh, in sharing of the word because these things are important without these things how are we going to uh, you know develop in in the spiritual matters so uh, doing life i mean uh, doing community minus the pursuit of god doesn't make it a christian community okay uh, what else uh, are we saying uh, we're saying that Mm. the goal of spiritual community is to grow together in godliness okay uh, and then uh, the other other requirements as we see in the bible you know love one another with brotherly brotherly love carry one another's burdens so we are there for each other even the early church was uh, was a very caring church they they took care of each one's needs uh, and similarly christian community should have that genuine care for the people who belong to the community then um yeah i am just trying to give us some distinct points here okay uh, uh, we must also be a community that engages in love and good works towards the people outside then a cr- good christian community is a community that engages in the great commission that has love for the people who are lost in the world outside uh, and it's a community that experiences the kingdom of god you know the kingdom of god and we've discussed you know what is the meaning of the kingdom of god the power of the kingdom of god the values of the kingdom of god the principles of the kingdom of god so it experiences all of that and that makes for a good christian community now what christian community should not be now uh, we're not saying that you know in any any gathering uh which is you know let's say a church gathering um if you miss out on prayer something is wrong or you know if you we all didn't sing a two or three worship songs together then something is wrong with us no it's not about the activity but it's about the the uh, you know the overall vision of why why we have these relationships you know the genuine care the genuine intention to see everyone grow and develop in god so as long as we have that i know activities will happen sometimes you know every time you meet somebody from your fellowship you may not pray with them that's okay you know it's not about the christian activities uh, but the goals have to be correct why why are we together or why are these relationships how did this these relationships form and what is the reason for which you know we we have uh, this fellowship so in case our gatherings or the fellowship uh, becomes one of worldliness okay, what do we mean by that you know we could all be um, from the same church uh, and from the same fellowship but there's nothing uh, you know spiritual about about uh, this fellowship so basically you know people gather everyone's a christian but the the things that they follow are 
of the flesh for example in ephesians 5 it says mm, uh, for, uh, but fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness let it not even be named among you as is fitting for saints neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor coarse jesting which are not fitting but rather giving of thanks so if you know uh, so called believers they they come together and uh, conversations are about you know some uh um un- unholy things or or you know some bad movies stuff like that we could be believers we could be from the same church but you see that that fellowship that community is not fitting the model that we see in the early church and the instructions of god's word for us so doing community like that uh it's not you we can't classify that as christian community just because people of the same church are coming together often okay we could be hanging out but talking all kinds of kinds of things doing all kinds of things that are not uh, you know righteous in god's sight so that is not true christian community also uh, in the name of christian community sometimes what happens you know we like to cling to the believers and that becomes an excuse for us not to step out in the world and uh, make disciples okay so uh, i think the archbishop of canterbury does one statement he makes that a, a christian should not become uh, you shouldn't um, uh, what uh, a salt is not you know meant to be happy in the salt shaker so we're all together and we're just happy to be salt together we are not willing to take a risk and share the gospel proclaim the gospel with others outside so that again is not christian community you know so uh, these are things we must be careful about okay now uh, i i said that maybe once in a while you know we really don't engage in in prayer or there there may not be any sharing of the word you just come together uh, and, and then you know for whatever reason there's no prayer or anything you just leave but in general in general you know we honor the lord uh, through the sharing of our faith we honor the lord through the sharing of the word we honor the lord through the sh- through worship you know all the other things that draws closer to god because otherwise what happens it's all it's about us and it's not about god anymore so always keep god at the center of christian community and fellowship so that's a little bit about christian community what it should be what it should not be any any comments on this any thoughts uh, and after this we could move on to the next section here Okay, is there a, a question, Kennedy? Yes, uh, Kennedy, we can hear you. You are unmuted. Yes, yes, please. My audio. Okay, Kennedy, uh, do you have a question? Okay, I'm not sure if uh, the hand is raised by mistake here. okay uh, okay sorry everyone i think i'll have to mute kennedy because he probably is not able to hear us okay fine yes uh, abraham you have a question yes pastor i i once led a group i mean mm-hmm. um, um especially here in vietnam i once led a group that um as we were growing it got to a point that the activities became um like um self conscious it was to make people feel comfortable it was to know um people's problem you know the agenda was oh let's have more fun time i mean you know um they like to go outside and eat they like to go outside and talk but um being the leader then i i realized that if i allow those things even though those things are good but those things are not really helping the people especially when they brought the issue of um trying to know people's problem so i said okay um if we are supposed to know people's problem can we solve it because these are people that even if they discuss their problem they don't have the solution so i was trying to let them know that the most important thing here 
is the word of God and at least prayer. But it was like prayer was becoming forceful. If you are calling for prayer, it's like a bed. It's like you are causing people to do something abnormal. And also, if you are trying to make decisions based on the word of God, that let's give these people the word of God. That's the only solution to their problem. So that at least when they have issues that we cannot handle, we can go to the pastor and find solutions. So I think this became a very, I mean, challenging moment for me that it looks as if um, either I am being too spiritual or I'm trying to say that I know so much that the other people don't know. So it really had a, a, an impact on me that uh, at the end of the day, I have to step back and do so many other things. So my question here is that, is it because I don't know about the cross-culture ministry and uh, accept their culture or, um, you know, because I am from Africa and they are from Asia. So it's like, oh, we are, we are too forceful because at the point I was told that, oh, Africans are given the grace to pray. You know, it's like, okay, so prayer, God has given people grace to pray. Other people don't have the grace to pray. So it's like, um, we are more of, we want to speak in tongues, we want to pray, we want to share the gospel, but other people are very quiet. So how do we balance these two? Is it about Christ, as you said, or is it about culture and all those things? I, I would like to get some clarification. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah, thank you, Abraham. Very interesting. Um, and thank you for sharing, you know, honestly, the challenges that you have faced. Uh, so from my perspective, um, I would say that, you know, a, a little bit uh, can be the, the cultural uh, difference here. Um, uh, but overall, you know, we, we, we are people of the kingdom culture. Okay, so uh, yes, we could be from different nations and uh, worship God in dif differently, uh, but we have to adopt the kingdom culture based on God's word. So the overall uh, overall thing that you're saying about having prayer and fellowship uh, based on you know um, uh, fellowship for the sake of spiritual growth, that is correct. What you're saying is correct. Okay, now. Um, uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know if the if the the way the fellowship was going on uh, was uh, intentionally for for spiritual growth or some some things were missed out over there. So when something like that happens, a good thing to do is to see if you can address it with the leaders in a in a very you know respectful way, um, and then uh, if possible, make changes. Okay, uh, so that that is how we would go about uh, making amendments. Uh, now, if if you know that the the format of the church is such, and then they are not ready to to accept our inputs, then just let it be because you've done your part of of uh, sharing your concerns uh, and what you've done, you know, engaging in other things. That's fine. It's fair enough. You know, you you got in, involved in other things, so that's okay. Uh, now, uh, talking about you know culturally. The way you prayed and um, you said, you know, Africans, people say that, okay, they are grace with more. You see, uh, I mean, I am talking from my experience. I, I shared with all of us, right? Like I had so many uh, brothers and sisters from Africa worshipping at, uh, at our location. And, um, uh, you know, I, I, I love their style of worship. And then uh, also they had this concept of overnights. So they constantly like, uh, and we did start off, you know, overnight worship also. We had that for, uh, for uh, you know, several months through the night we would pray and all. But what I realized is some of the other folk, like, you know, the uh, Indian folk from our location, they found it very difficult to connect with that extent, you know, uh, like in terms of the time, prolonged periods of time to engage in prayer because uh, these these uh, brothers and sisters from Africa, they were used to it. But some of, you know, our other friends here, they were not used to it. So what I'm trying to say is sometimes there can be that cultural difference. So uh, when we notice that, you can see how to bridge it. Okay, so what we did is we kind of shortened the time. So we didn't go through the whole night, but we decided we will just do, you know, three or four hours straight, you know, prayer, worship and all. And it was fine for the uh, Africans as well as, you know, the, the Indians who were joining. So from that place, we're building uh, capacity, even of the, uh, the Indian folk who are not used to, 
with that kind of overnight uh, prayer and worship the every week so culturally there can be some challenges uh, abraham so we will have to observe if you go to a new place to minister we'll have to observe observe where they are at and then see how um you know and also again we we really need to ask the question whether things have to be done in the format that we used to do it in our earlier place okay so you might want to do things differently for or uh, this particular crowd where god has sent you so you don't have to follow the um, old format or way of doing things uh, am i answering your question does it make any yes, sense pastor. yes pastor thank you so much okay sure 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 yes yes thank you right so uh, yeah uh, all these aspects if we take that into consideration then uh, we will be able to do community in a better fashion yeah great question uh, any anything else to clarify uh, before we proceed because these are all you know aspects that we are going to apply so that's the reason i'm asking us okay great so i think yeah we have we have a good idea now and then uh, uh, we can practice make changes learn so uh, the rest of uh, the content here in this section uh, it talks about how uh, in the family in the family we said that the householder or the leader of of the house the spiritual leader of the house is responsible for um, the way things are so the word of god teaches us that god promises us that he will uh, judge the world but the judgment will begin from the house of god so god is a god who wants to see order in his own family first so as god's people you know uh, we we must yield to that we must cooperate with god uh, and, and know that just because it's a family we can't do things our own way we have to go by god's word and god's standards okay and uh, there are certain practical aspects that have been uh, put out here for us to consider and we've touched on nearly you know all of these uh, elaborately earlier so we 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 are saying that we can create a sense of belonging in the uh, church uh, beyond the sunday services so then you know your life groups come into play uh, you could also have teams right here at apc we have different teams and in fact the teams uh, become a place of fellowship yeah uh, you know the uh, the teams have uh, people mentoring one another praying for one another so you have ushering team worship team media team so there are different ways of creating small smaller groups and as it's up to every local church how they want to create these smaller groups so uh, do life in community uh, and then develop a son mentality so the pastors if they treat people as sons and daughters then you know you you, you develop sons and daughters and the the congregation has a son daughter mentality towards the leaders and, and you know that's how a, a life should happen in the family of god then encourage fathers and mothers to nurture younger ones um and uh, all the ingredients of true christian community you know uh, make sure that we we try to focus on that and build true christian community uh, some of the challenges that that we might see we've already said you know a um, uh, time to develop christian community it's not all that easy anymore okay because we have a very different way uh, 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 very different way in which people's lives are scheduled you know you have uh, people connecting um, online and everyone's online these days so even if you call them for for something that is offline they may not prefer to come so there are there are new challenges in our in our society today but we can be creative and see how this christian community can be nurtured uh, you know in person and also use uh, other resources to do that okay uh then what are some of the other challenges yeah in large congregations people might feel disconnected so uh, we have to be intentional about creating smaller groups um and when smaller groups do form we have to be careful about clicks clicks and factions because people can end up in their own um 
you know group it could be a language group or it could be uh, a group that um, has subscribes to a certain ideology or you know the way in the corinthian church some people were fans of paul and some were fans of apollos so within the church within the congregation we can have all these divisions uh, but we have to be careful about cliques and factions okay so um, i know we've overshot time but we will take mangi's question and then we will go for a break yes mangi please go ahead thank you pastor yeah um I just want to, to to ask about uh we're talking about mentoring and family and father figures and and mothers mm. when does 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 the father know or realize that the child has grown and then it's time to to release to release them so that they can go and fly on their own because mm. most of the time they tend to to hold it as the, uh young people down and think people remain under their wings for forever <laughs> thank you pastor yeah sure good question mangi uh, so mangi it depends on the destiny of that individual okay and the growth progression of the individual so as a mentor we will work closely with them and we will observe okay uh, and we'll see okay god is god is opening up these doors and uh, the person is is growing in their in their personal walk with the lord in the uh, uh, you know in the ministry they they are serving well so as we are observing these things the progression that they are making you know at some point they may not need as much input so we are only available for whatever input they need or if they need input okay but otherwise we just let them grow we let them grow initially yes there's a lot of hand holding but eventually they become more and more independent and then um, we we mentioned that a mentoring relationship should be a divine one that you know god divinely orchestrates uh, connections like paul and timothy okay uh, so in the same way we must be led by god to understand the timing the seasons that the mentee is going through and you know god god orchestrates this timing in in amazing ways and you will kind of know oh okay this maybe the person got a job in another country and they're moving out but that's as much as you can do for that individual now they they're moving for good you may not have that same opportunity anymore so from a distance you can still continue to encourage them but uh you know at that point maybe it, it, you you could think to yourself yeah i have to release this person now let them go and do what god has called them to do so that also is uh, led by the spirit you know led by uh, god so that's how we will know man uh, as we are walking with people yeah does it help yeah sure sure and uh, i i remember we had one session for the volunteers in church uh, about mentoring and in that uh, session a uh, pastor was sharing about how as we mentor people uh, and mandy you brought that up also you know at, at what point uh, i mean people can the fathers and mothers can sort of keep the mentees under okay forever but uh, in that session i i remember pastor was sharing about how as the menti grows there could come a time where the dynamics of the relationship change slightly so it's like at some point they have become those those fellow workers together with us uh, and they don't need as much input maybe all they need is to work together and you know a word of encouragement and accountability from time to time but you become like sort of you know uh, uh, how do i say this they grow up like in regular families you know those those who are parents of teenagers and young adults you know your relationship dynamics is very different because now they are more like friends and you don't you don't really uh, have to grill them on the basics so that can happen even in a spiritual mentoring relationship where they are, are somewhat friends uh, and then you know you talk about the same things uh, and you know they are very mature 
uh, and the interactions change after a while so they're not really under anymore yeah so additional thought there maggie okay so okay uh, susan has a question let's let's take that up uh, yes susan please go ahead no ma'am my mistake my oh, hand got my mistake <laughs> okay 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 no problem no problem susan all right uh, beth i was reading about the journey of paul and barnabas barnabas was like paul's father figure but then the dynamics changed yes but it looks like it took a disagreement for the mentee to step out yeah yeah yes uh, beth you know personalities they clashed uh, and uh, that's how they parted ways but yeah you're right you know at some point barnabas was not uh, providing as much input into paul's life as he did in the initial days okay so thank you for sharing that thought okay on that note we will go for a break we'll come back at 10:06 okay 10 minute break and then we will move on to a different topic okay thank you everyone see you after the break bye